Welcome to Cheap Physical Games That Don't Suck. My name's Sean, and this week I've been digging through Warner Brothers games on the Nintendo Game Boy. It's easy to overlook the Game Boy these days. I think I, and probably other people, just find it a little hard to go back to. But there are several good ways to play the games now, without the ugly old green screen or the bottomless pit of AA batteries. And a good chunk of the big, region-free library is pretty inexpensive. Speaking of which, it feels like the cheaper end of the Game Boy library is full of licensed stuff. I've got a soft spot for old Warner Brothers properties myself, in particular because I feel like they're a little overlooked. So here's a quick recap of what I added to the super official master list this week. 8 cheap Warner Brothers Game Boy games that don't suck. Well, mostly. Starting with my Game of the Week, which just means that I wanted to play it and use it as this episode's background fodder. You've probably already noticed it rolling along back there. That's Tiny Toon Adventures, Bab's Big Break, which is a good example of what Konami did with the Tiny Toons license back then. It's a good 2D platformer, and it looks and sounds really strong for a Game Boy game from 1992. Gameplay includes three different protagonists with unique projectiles, and some nice level design too. It does feel slow, almost like you're trying to drag your character across the screen. But this is somewhat common in Game Boy games, especially when we blow them up on TVs like 10 times the size of the original Game Boy. It's not a deal breaker here because this is a really solid game. Moving on to at least touch on the rest of the games I added this week, Montana's Movie Madness is the sequel to the previous game and it shakes up the gameplay just enough to distinguish itself and is every bit as good. Also, it's not really a series, but the final game of this Konami trio of Tiny Toon Adventures Game Boy games is called Wacky Sports, which is a compilation of six sports-style minigames. They're about as simple as you'd expect, but enjoyable enough that it's neat to have them stuffed in a single little Game Boy cartridge. Moving on to Sunsoft, and starting at the top, there's Batman the video game based on the Warner Brothers movie, so I'm counting it. It's kind of infamous because you play as a gunslinging, shoot everyone on screen version of the Caped Crusader, like a broody little Sunsoft Mega Man. It's a little pricier than anything else here, but it's also probably the best overall game here. I wanted more Warner movie based games, but I just couldn't find any decent cheap ones. I'm not very familiar with the Batman Return of the Joker, and I'd like to give it a stronger look someday, but it's noticeably less common and less well-liked than the original, and Dennis the Menace and Batman Forever are just terrible. The other Sunsoft games worth mentioning are Looney Tunes, which is a solid platformer that uses different episodes as a mechanism for some nice level design and character diversity, and Tasmania, which is an okay platformer, but it has nice audiovisuals and a satisfying little whirl spin special move, which I assume is why you'd want to play any Taz game. Don't confuse Tasmania with its sequel, which is not a good game and I would not recommend it. I'm also skipping Daffy Duck, The Marvin Missions, which is a Duck Dodgers game, and I sincerely doubt it's bad, but I'm not very familiar with it, and the reviews online are a little scattered, so I'll look at it more another time. Finally, the games that might be the most contentious adds to the list. We have the Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle and its sequel, the Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle 2 from Chemco. The original is not deep or imaginative, but it's a clean, simple, arcade-style platformer thing. Like even more simple than Pac-Man, but in vertical platforming levels like the setup in Bubble Bobble. I'm having a hard time explaining why, but it just feels like an appropriate experience for Nintendo's first handheld. And the sequel is better and more interesting in just about every way. Neither is particularly impressive or special, but both just generally fit what I'm looking for. And that's it! Eight cheap Warner Brothers Game Boy games that don't suck. I'm sure I'm missing some, but that's the idea. Just coming here to have some fun, share some ideas, and learn some stuff. Thank you very much for hanging out with me for a little bit, and remember that if you get sick of hearing my stupid voice, you can get a big chunk of the same material on my website or social media. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.